Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and looks like we have another major update. The update about that asteroid that might hit planet Earth in 2032. Or at least, that's what we thought previously. Because, as I've basically mentioned in some of the previous videos in the description, it's not going to take long for researchers to come up with better predictions about the trajectory of this asteroid and where it's most likely going to be headed. And if it's actually going to hit anything. And while in short, the answer now is that it's unlikely to hit planet Earth at all. But let's actually discuss how all of this was achieved and what we know right now, and why it's almost certainly now that this asteroid is going to pass between Earth and the Moon without hitting anything. But in case this is the first time you're hearing about this, or I guess if you've been living under a rock for the past month, an asteroid rock, pun intended, let's briefly summarize what we knew about this rock just a few days ago. And you can sort of see it right here, 2024 YR4. An asteroid estimated to be 40 to 90 meters in size, much larger than the Chelyabinsk meteor, and most likely the same size as the famous Tunguska impactor. And this of course makes it a somewhat large rock compared to everything we know. Now meteorites and space dust hitting the planet is of course something that's very common. Approximately 44 tons of space dust enters planetary atmosphere every single year. But finding a larger impactor is obviously a little bit more unusual, because an event of this size is believed to only happen once every 10,000 years. Yet here we had another potential impactor, very similar to the event from 1908, which of course made this somewhat intriguing. With the last major impactor known to us being the Jelebinx meteor from 2013. That one was obviously much much smaller, but even at this size, the total energy release here was very similar to approximately 500 kilotons of TNT. In contrast, the estimates for this new asteroid suggested that if it actually collides, it's going to release something equivalent to 8 million tons of TNT. So at least 15 to 16 times more powerful. But here's the thing, everything here depended on its size, it also depended on its mass, and of course its composition and even its shape. And it's really its shape and composition that produced the most uncertainty in all of these calculations. And so when back in December of 2024, astronomers in Chile identified this bizarre rock, because it was about 40 to 90 meters in size, and because it was so faint, for the first few weeks everything about it was barely known. But its trajectory did suggest that it might collide with the planet, with the risk assessment changing every week and the probability of collision increasing over time. Here's actually a really cool visualization by ESA showing us how this impact probability changed over time as additional observations were made. And as we've discussed in that previous video, which should be in the description, the actual probability was getting uncomfortably high, to the point where this asteroid was now on the Torino scale with a value of 3, which essentially suggested localized damage within approximately 20 to 40 kilometers away from the impact. And in the middle of February of 2025, the chance was as high as 3.1%, or 1 in 32. That's basically the highest we've ever seen of any asteroid previously, with this image basically going viral essentially showing us a potential path or possible locations where this asteroid might produce some damage. And apparently something like 100 million people live along this path. But here's the thing, a lot of these previous observations, especially in January and February of 2025, were actually lacking in accuracy. And that's because during this time, the moon was surprisingly bright. And the brightness from the moon unfortunately produced a lot of uncertainty. On top of this, this asteroid is also really small, and obviously this makes it very faint, and so it was extremely difficult to determine how big it is and how far away it was in order to determine the exact orbit. And while normally for these asteroids, being able to know what they're made out of and also being able to measure their reflectivity or albedo is actually super important because it allows us to figure out what's going to happen to these asteroids during their orbit around the Sun. And that's because by knowing the shape of the asteroid, its albedo and its size, we can then predict what sort of interactions it's going to have with the solar radiation. On top of this, the albedo or reflectivity also tells us what the asteroid is probably made out of, which allows us to determine its mass and thus its size. So for example, if this is actually a really dim asteroid made out of really dark deposits, it means that what we're seeing here is actually much larger, much more massive, and will thus have very different interactions with the sun because it's going to absorb more light, which will then heat up gases on its surface which can result in different emissions very similar to jets that can basically change the trajectory of the asteroid, nudging it in certain directions. There's also something known as the Europe effect and Yarkovsky effect, which changes both the spin of the asteroid 
and also provides it with a little bit of propulsion, which is entirely caused by the solar radiation and nothing else. You can learn about this in one of the older videos in the description. In contrast, if we have a very bright, reflective asteroid, it would suggest a much smaller object and also an object that actually feels more radiation pressure from the Sun, with that pressure then pushing on the asteroid and thus moving it away in a different direction. And so here a reflectivity, or albedo, can actually pretty much affect everything. And for the past few decades, NASA and ESA have been actively tracking approximately 1700 different asteroids that are considered to have elevated risk. And for each of those asteroids, we now know almost exact albedo and almost exact size, which also means that we know exactly where they're going to be for at least the next 100 years. And in previous videos we've discussed this website behind me known as Sentry. This is a NASA database where all of these asteroids are tracked, and so far as you can see, nothing here seems to be too dangerous. But in that video last week, we actually had one asteroid here right on top. It was 2024 YR4, yet it's not on top anymore, and it's actually extremely hard to find it on the list because here the risks have been dramatically downgraded. The impact probability now is extremely low, way way below 1%, or 1 in 59,000 as of February 26, 2025. And something similar was announced by ESA with their independent calculation, producing a very similar result, but maybe with a slightly higher chance of collision. And here ESA produced the animation, showing us how all of this was worked out. And so right here, as of February of 24th, the probability is only 0.001%, which is of course what a lot of scientists thought is going to happen. With most of these detections, at first, the chance of collision is usually much higher, but as we actually work out the trajectory through additional thorough observations, the risks usually drop dramatically. This is actually exactly what happened to the famous Apophis as well. But even here, we still don't actually know exactly what the albedo is, or even what this asteroid is made out of. And so there's still going to be a little bit of uncertainty. For example, right now albedo is believed to be anywhere between 0.05 to 0.25, and it's believed to be a rocky S-type asteroid. And so if the albedo here is actually much higher, this trajectory might change again, but is unlikely to increase the chance of collision with Earth. And so until we know its shape, its size, and its composition in more detail, we're not really going to know the exact trajectory. Which is surprisingly exactly what happened with the famous Rosetta mission from the now famous 67P comet. At first the predictions of its orbit and the overall predictions of its shape and its composition were extremely different. It was actually thought to be something like this. It basically resembled some kind of a squished pumpkin. But as we know today, its actual shape was very different and it eventually earned the nickname Robert Ducky Comet. And so despite very thorough observations of this really large object, even here the predictions were initially incorrect. And so something very similar is happening here, except that this is a much smaller object, and so the uncertainty levels are much higher. But intriguingly, instead of colliding with planet Earth, it now has a much higher chance of a collision with the Moon. And you can once again see why in this simulation. As the uncertainty region decreased in size, the center of the uncertainty was extremely close to the surface of the Moon, with a chance increasing from 0.3% before to now over 1%, and possibly even higher as I'm making this video. This was recently reported by NASA scientists when they conducted additional observations on February 20th, with the ESA scientists using the Very Large Telescope confirming the same, which is actually maybe even a little bit exciting, mostly because it's unlikely to affect the planet in any way, but there's a very high chance that if it does collide with the Moon, not only is it going to be a super exciting event, it's also very likely going to produce a lot of good science, mostly because it's suddenly going to excavate a tremendous amount of regolith from the surface of the Moon, allowing the scientists to basically sample everything in real time. Here, if this impact does occur, it might produce a crater up to 2 kilometers in size, 1.2 miles, releasing approximately 5 megatons of energy. And though the impact flash might be extremely quick and barely visible from Earth, all of the rock that's going to be vaporized and sent around the Moon is most likely going to be visible in some way. And so basically here we have a new prediction. There is now maybe a chance of a collision with the Moon sometimes in 2032, specifically in December. But because this asteroid is extremely unlikely to ever be dangerous again, it's also very likely we're not going to talk about it that much. And so until future discoveries, or until we learn something else incredible about this rock, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves to know about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else. 
Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.